So, I got my first block on YouTube via a comment exchange today. Well, it looks like I'm in the big leagues now, dog. Anyway, I was watching a video by The Religious Snitch, and it started off as a critique by play sort of thing while he was watching that episode of Bells when Elise Neal's character introduces this guy she's dating to her family and then he turns out to be an atheist. So far, so good. He then talks about how atheists are portrayed in the media and how we need to speak out about it, fight it, etc, etc. And you know, I was with it. I was down. I agreed with all the points he made in that part. Until he brought up a video called Your Fake Drama is Stupid by Awesome Rants. Now, he mentions how much his kid is a fan of Awesome Rant and all that. But then he tries to make the case that with that particular video that Awesome Rants made, that she was telling atheists that they shouldn't speak out about their experiences and what have you. Which isn't what she said. The video was pretty much, it was, it was like, it was nothing more than like this passionate, unscripted uh, critique of Dramagate and the mechanisms of YouTube atheist discourse, which have made movement atheism stagnant, to say the least. So, and she was, um, she was expressing her dislike of the unnuanced, immovable stance of religion being the sole bane of existence and cause of most, if not all, human suffering, right? You know, in the world. Uh, she was expressing her dislike of that sort of stance being the main focus and talking points in some YouTube atheists' commentary. Uh, which usually includes generalizing all theists as a monolithic group. That is the discourse that she was expressing be done away with in her video. That was it. Now, um, judging from the replies I was getting from the religious snitch in his comment section, like, I can I can see how someone will could take that as like a, a privileged perspective if your life really hasn't been affected much by religion it might be a little hard to understand why some talk about it a lot you know uh, religion is a big part of cultural life in the south so if you're an atheist life is pretty hard for you you know, I live in New York and my life really hasn't been that impacted by religion. Uh, I mean, my family is Baptist and until I was 18 they, you know, tried to, you know, put the religion on me and everything. But I've pretty much kind of done my own thing and gone on my own journey, you know, with my own route. And people have just sort of known their role and just backed off from trying to force the shit on me, you know what I mean? So, but I understand that that's a very different story in the South. And when you dealt with being ostracized and discriminated against, like uh, the incident with his, uh, I guess his stepson and the baseball team that was, that religious snitch talked about, when you deal with that type of shit for so long, you know, I guess one, one can't really help but think or believe that religion is, you know, if not the main factor or main cause of a lot of strife and suffering and problems, because at that present moment, it is a very big factor in, in the hardships that they go through. So, so I get it you know and I could have said all this in the comments section had the religious snitch not amped up and was all like well if you don't like it then why are you watching if you don't like those type of videos by atheists like that then why are you watching and then he blocked me I watched because 
I'm a grown ass woman and I can. And that's a pretty dumb ass question to ask, which part of me thinks that it was some of, it was kind of like a code for, well, if you don't like what I'm saying, and if you disagree with me, then just get the fuck out. You know, because blocking someone who doesn't uh, agree with you on a certain point while sending a shitload of more comments that they can't comment on because you blocked them is the, you know, logical and rational approach. But I digress. You know, people seem to forget that religion is this, it's this man-made cultural, like, system. It's this social, like construct and it was utilized for different reasons over the ages and you know it's it's man-made it's a system created by people who continue to use it to rationalize good behavior and bad behavior you know views on equality and bigotry um those things are sort of i guess symptoms of they're just a part of something of a greater thing you know so to call relit so to to sort of push it that religion is like the main cause of human suffering and nothing else is bullshit because n not just because there are also other determining factors that go on in the world that cause suffering but also because being an atheist doesn't mean you're exempt from committing worse crimes against people you know now this is not me saying I'm not saying you know don't speak out on what you are or and what you've experienced because people need to hear what we have to say as atheists people need to know what we go through for you know for being different you know, it, it's just the method of delivering the discourse that's the issue. It's the lack of nuance and knowledge about a metric fuck ton of things, you know, while holding this belief that being an atheist makes you so fucking unique and special and better than theists. That type of shit is the issue. Okay? So... In light of all that, I am not even sure why Awesome Rant's video was even brought up in the first place because she wasn't making the claim that the religious snitch claims that she was making. So he just basically strawmanned her position. No bueno. As an atheist of color in a demographic where the majority of people within it still identify as Christian or, you know, identify as theists, I definitely think it's important that our voices are heard. I, def I really do think it's important that people know that we are here and we exist and know about our experiences. I also think it's important to know, it's important to allow your perspectives room to grow and for your, you know, point of view to sort of, like, you know, evolve, adapt, become broader. And to think that you have to become as dogmatic and immovable and as aggressive and as douches, douchebaggish as the fundamentalists and extremists that you critique that's that's a sad thing that's a disturbing thing you know when you feel or when you think that you have to take on the same attributes as the group that you claim is ostracizing you or oppressing you you've really lost the battle i thought i was going to end the video with that little saying but uh but i i kind of figured that I guess I should give a better answer to the question that was posed to me in the comment section by the religious snitch. She was like, well, if you don't like those type of videos, then why do you still watch them? Isn't that like the definition of insanity or some shit like that? Because I expressed that there are some YouTube atheists out there who 
uh, definitely in light of the whole Dramagate thing, it, it really showed that they really have nothing, a couple of them really have nothing else to talk about besides atheism. And if that's the case, then yeah, their channels are going to be pretty fucking boring unless they're not boring people unless they could find ways to sort of tie other subjects into that or even talk about different shit you know um there are other youtube atheists that i do follow that talk about things other things that are important you know, like, uh, the majority of YouTube atheists that I follow talk about important shit like politics and the political process. Um, before Cardinal Virtues closed his channel down, I subscribed to him mainly because he was he's a conservative and I'm liberal, but when I watched a couple of his videos, his political videos, they uh, they really spoke to me. They really uh, informed. They're very informative, very descriptive, and uh, I found that I agreed with a couple of his stances. You know, even being you know a Democrat and you know and being liberal and you know he's a conservative. So um, I was really into his videos because his his area of expertise was political science. Um, the same thing with the skeptical heretic. He's a he's an atheist, but he talks about other things. He talks about politics. He talks about science to an extent, mostly when it comes to um, to I guess um, uh, human like ev evolution and biology and in in the in the context of of race. Like he basically bitch slapped all the. Um, all the uh, the the racists the real racists of uh on youtube and that's what that's what initially attracted me to subscribing to him he really didn't talk about atheism that much unless something came up and he wanted to give an opinion on it that doesn't mean he doesn't care about i don't think it means that he doesn't sort he doesn't care about plights of you know you know atheists being discriminated or anything like that but it's just that's not the only thing he talks about same thing with Richard Dick Coughlin he talks a lot about um, if it's not a po if it's not politics then it's about him being a comedian you know like the majority of YouTube atheists that I follow have a lot of shit going on in their lives like they have a lot of different interests and in other avenues so their channels don't get boring not to mention that they have, you know, good personalities and they know how to, how to, um, how to build an audience. So, um, for the most part, yeah, the majority of atheists that I follow don't just talk about atheism, if they do at all at times. Um, when I first started really coming to terms with the fact that I that I really didn't need religion or need to believe in God to be a good person. I watched a lot of Bionic Dance's videos because she was very, she was out there and loud and expressing her views and, you know, sort of angry about it. And I think every person who, a good number of people who I guess were ex-theists and, you know, they, they've done all the research, they've, they've believed for a while and something just gives them something just leads them to the conclusion that that uh they don't need religion that they've been lied to or whatever for a while you do sort of got to find a way to sort of fit in that new role with that new label so you do get kind of angry especially depending on how long you were a theist and you know whatever came with that and how you feel after you make you know, after you made your transition before you know found your truth or whatever so i think a lot of us kind of start off with needing that fire and being angry and you know when people with people sort of trying to uh, silence you or ostracizing or discriminating against you you know you need people you need to see people who are I guess out there and vocal about not believing so that you don't feel like you're like you're alone like there's a voice out there 
and it encourages you to, to get more confident in your role or whatever. So, you know, I was definitely into bionic dance and, you know, Cult of Dusty and even The Amazing Atheist for a while. But as I started expanding my subscription to other YouTube atheists and they were talking about, like I said, they talk about atheism a little bit, but they were also into other things so the the more uh the more people that i subscribed to that had different focuses in their you know a different type of focus in their channel the broader my perspective got so i kind of grew out of the whole uh atheism one-on-one -on -one thing you know and uh, my perspectives broadened and grew and and adapt and I adapted so I basically grew out of the whole uh, atheism 101 thing so um, yeah I hope that I hope that sufficiently answers that question